Standard SOLIDWORKS views, even with perspective turned on, have their limitations in terms of creating a render. Oftentimes, if you want to create that realistic looking render, or maybe even an artistic version, you'll need to use a camera. Cameras are quick and easy to create, but they have a lot of options. So let's take a look at creating a camera. From our view menu, we'll go down to lights and cameras and add camera. Once you select add camera, you'll notice that your view changes to two separate panes. On the right hand side, we see camera one. This is what your camera is seeing. On the left hand side, you have a free view for which you can move your camera around and manipulate options. Now it's important to note that as we're moving this camera around, we want to make sure that we view it from multiple different angles. The red dot is the location or the focal point. We have some options to target by selection. For instance, if we want to target this line, it's going to be able to target and stay fixed onto that line. You'll notice that we now have a percentage slider where we can locate it at 50% to get to the middle of that line or that edge. We also have camera position by selection. If we want to locate the camera on maybe a moving camera dolly, or if we want to locate it on certain geometry as if it's fixed to a model, we can select certain areas of a model and constrain it to that. You notice that we have camera type. We have aimed at target, floating. We also have some options to show numerical control and lock camera position except when editing. If you don't want to lock the camera position down, you want to be able to move it freely in the modeling environment, you want to deselect this option. For us, we're going to create a camera and we want that to stay fixed. We don't want anything in our scene moving. So we're going to create aimed at target, locked camera, and we're going to show numerical controls. Once you turn on numerical controls, you'll notice that you get some positioning options. We can rotate around our model based on an angle. We can rotate up and down based on an angle. We also still have free control over the camera. We're not completely fixed to using those options. Next, let's look at camera rotation. We can select an axis or a plane or a planar face to roll the camera about, or it's just going to roll about its own axis. So currently we want a zero degree roll, but if you have a specific roll that you need, you can enter it here, or you can manually move the slider. The next option we want to look at is field of view. Now the field of view is very important. We have a perspective option, and then we have a bunch of standard cameras that we can grab. We have wide angle cameras, all the way down to telephoto. For this example, we're going to be using a 35 millimeter wide angle. Now you'll notice that we also have custom control over a few things. There's a diagram at the top to show you that we can control the angle, the length, and the height of our camera. The angle is going to be the angle at which the viewing cone comes out of your camera. Now you'll notice as we drag it, it's manually going through different options within our view. If we select 35 millimeter, that changes our angle automatically. We can adjust the length, but you'll notice that once we do this, we're going to a custom camera. So these options are all here if you need to get a custom view of your model, or if you want to use a standard camera such as this 35 millimeter wide angle. We also have options to select an aspect ratio. If you're doing an HD format, you can select that from your options. Or if you're going to use a standard video and print format 4x3, you can select that as well. That changes what the overall view size is going to be on your camera. The last option we have down here is drag aspect ratio. Drag aspect ratio will allow you to manually manipulate this inside of the modeling window. Most of the time, this is not going to be a good option, and you want to control it with these dialogues or selecting a standard camera. But if you need that control, you can manually drag that inside of your 3D space. For me, I'm going to go ahead and stick with a standard video and print format and turn off my drag aspect ratio. The last thing I want to focus on is depth of field. Now, this is more of an advanced topic, but I'm just going to touch on it here and we'll use it later on in the series. The depth of field option allows you to select a focal point, which is the darker plane in the center, and then a set of clipping planes. This will essentially focus on a single area of your part and allow you to blur or start to blur anything that is in front of or behind the front and back clipping planes respectively. We can focus by selection or we can manually move this around. There are several different ways that you can use these slider bars in SOLIDWORKS. 
simply dragging it has a standard deviation. So you'll notice that we're going up and down by 10 millimeters. If we hold down the control key, we're then going up and down by 100 millimeters. If we hold down the shift key, we're going up and down by 10. If we hold down the alt key, you're going up and down by one. So there are a few different ways that you can zoom in and you can get down to the right focus without having to manually enter numbers. Or you can always come back and manually enter a value. It's important to rotate this around because you don't want to clip off too much of your part. So in this case, I'm going to hold down the alt key and manually move things around. So essentially, we'll be focusing on the middle area of our part and blurring in the front and back. This is great if you need to focus in on details such as an emblem or a logo, a specific part of your design that has a lot of detail you want to show off, or if you're just trying to obscure your object from the rest of the environment. For now, I'm going to turn this option off and we're going to OK the creation of camera one. Once the camera has been created, you can go to your heads up view manager to view orientation and you'll be able to view this camera at any point in time. You can rotate and move around to other standard views and you can always get back to that camera. If at any point in time you need to change the camera, you can go to view, lights and cameras, properties, and down to camera one and you can modify any of the values or parameters that you've created. Let's go ahead and say okay and we're gonna leave camera one within our model. 